It's the fact that he's given up way more base runners lately than he has early on. When you have an opposition batting average of 210, you're going to win a lot of games. And by the way, that's about where Yabani Gallardo's opponent batting average is. But lately, for Cueto, it has been tough and a lot of working out of the stretch position. It's a great matchup of some young ones right here. We'll see what happens. Let's take a look at our beep beep G pitching matchup. It's Gallardo against Cueto, the two 23 year olds going at each other. Gallardo with a two and one career record against Cincinnati. You know, when they both get into problems, it's problems of a different sort. Giovanni Gallardo gets wild. He tries to strike out a lot of guys with his curveball. He misses and he puts them on base. On the other hand, Johnny Cueto over the last five ball games in 22 innings has given up 30 hits. That's very un-Johnny Cueto-like. I'm sure each prospective manager hopes that their pitcher's on the beam today. We'll be on a Sunday roll. That's your G pitching matchup coming up next. It's a game of starters, a game of relievers. Next up, the Reds will try to do some business with the bats. on the smiling side of a scoreboard against the Milwaukee Brew Crew. To do it, they've got to pump up the offensive bit. And when you look at the Reds and look at offensively where they stand, you know the big guys have to deliver. This is a Milwaukee team that believes very much in on-base percentage as they construct their lineup. Dusty Baker's more a seat-of-the-pants guy, but numbers don't lie. On-base percentage, Joey Votto, he's a good hitter, but he's a great on-base percentage guy, too. He'll take a walk. For Ryan Hannigan, same story. He's been the biggest surprise of this year, Chris. You know, and there's no question about that, George. That Ryan Hannigan has been a exceptional with two strikes, especially working walks, given the fact that he bats a lot of times in the eighth spot in the lineup. That's a tough place to do that. But when you are a hitter, one of your responsibilities is simply not making out and you're looking at a list right there on the Reds of the best players in that category going up to the plate and not making it out. At bats for run batted in you know who's at the top of that list Brandon Phillips of course has come up in the world in that respect as Phillips all told comes in with 14 homers and 60 knocked in in his 313 at bats this season the Reds need the big guys to deliver Jay Bruce of course out for eight weeks six to eight with his injury but Votto Phillips and the rest of the Reds hoping to put some numbers on the board this afternoon it's the Reds and the Brew Crew coming up next on Fox Sports Ohio. Grab life by Just for Men. Stay in the game with Just for Men hair color. And by Skyline Chili. Doesn't a Skyline Cheese Coney sound good right now? Come on, it's Skyline time. Baseball time at Great American Ballpark. Temperature very pleasant today. Low 70s. Humidity down a little from last night. Chance of a shower moving around the area and last night the shower caught up with the Reds a two hour rain delay one hour 59 minutes to be exact but even on this kind of an overcast day you got to give the little folks some sunscreen protection and they love every minute of it don't they day for memories at Great American Ballpark as the Reds and Brew Crew wrap up their four game series these two teams won't play again till the end of August when the Reds travel to Milwaukee the Reds come in hopeful of getting on a good run as they hit the road they are five and a half games back of St. Louis at the start of play today Dusty Baker's club four games under 500 43 and 47 the Brewers are only two back they're 47 and 44 four three games over 500 for Dusty Hoping for a Johnny Cueto like performance that he saw in the first two months of the season not what he's seen in the last couple of weeks. And this is of course run on day with some of the fine young folks out waiting for their favorite Reds to take their positions and sign a baseball and give them a memory. Chris your young days when you'd come to the ballpark with your dad Dan. Uh, didn't always get to go on the field, but those memories still stick with you. I never got to go on the field, George. In fact, I remember being chased away from the fence down by the dugout by the <laughs> usher saying, get out of here, kid. It's game time. <laughs> but you know what? Times have changed, and those are nine lucky individuals out there who are going to meet their players. They'll get an autograph signed by them, and we'll be up for ready for some afternoon baseball. The other good thing about Sundays here at Great American Ballpark, it's run on day, not only before the game, but after the game. They allow kids to run the bases after the game. There are a lot of young people that hang around just to get the feel of what it's like to run around in a major league diamond. So we start the day with kids on the field and we'll end it with kids on the field. In between, the Reds hoping for a W. 
Bob Evans sponsoring the lid lifter of this day as usual. Ryan Hannigan ready to go to work and let's check the starting lineup for Ken Maka and the Brew Crew. Starting it off today once again will be Craig Council who had a home run last night his third of the year. Mike Cameron who's never gotten a hit off Johnny Cueto 0 for six will bat in the number two position. Ryan Braun had yesterday off kind of a break after the All-Star festivities plus he got hit in both hands on a pitch in the first game of the series. Prince Fielder one of the big power hitters in the league in the cleanup spot then Corey Hart Matt Gamble J.J. Hardy and Jason Kendall against the Reds this year 321 and against Cueto four for nine in his career. Gallardo the pitcher at 125 bats in the number nine position. And will Johnny be good today. Well that's a good question I think the Dusty Baker would love to be able to answer that yes in fact the last very good game he pitched was right here at Great American Ballpark on July the 1st against the Arizona Diamondbacks six innings of one hit eight strikeout no run baseball would you love to see that out of this young 23 year old this afternoon. But he's facing a tough customer in Giovanni Gallardo who is among the leaders in all the National League with earned run average during the day. A lot of that had me have to do with how difficult it is to see the ball in Milwaukee during the daytime. But today shouldn't be all that tough from a glare standpoint over clouds or a lot of clouds overhead blocking out the sun. This looks like a good day to play baseball a good day to hit and for for Johnny Cueto a good day to stop the losing streak and try to salvage just four game set it to a piece. Reds will be heading to the airport after today. It'll be Michael Owings against Jason Schmidt tomorrow in the Dodgers. Tuesday Homer Bailey against Randy Wolf. Wednesday Bronson Arroyo against Chad Billingsley and Chris been a long time since we've seen Jason Schmidt and the Reds will get to see him tomorrow night in Los Angeles. Twenty five months since he has made his last major league start. They say his fastball is not where it once was but I'll be anxious to see him anyway. Me too. Here's Council stepping in in a 280. First pitch swing and dribble ones down the first baseline. Kevin Causey is your home plate umpire. Bill Miller at first, Daryl Cousins, the crew chief at second, and Brian Rungies down at third base. Your umpiring crew this afternoon here at Great American Ballpark. George Grant, Chris Welsh up in the booth. Still to come, of course, Reds Live post game. Jim Day and Jeff Paporo. There's a bloop into right. That'll drop for a base hit. So Council gets things started with a bloop base hit into right. Staying down important for Johnny Cueto. Council hit a pitch up for a homer last night and here a base hit on another pitch. Now this guy has been like a sand spur in your heel here for the Reds in this whole series. I'll tell you what for an aging second baseman who didn't think he was going to get a lot of playing time early in the season. He's become their very important leadoff man. He had a home run as you said last night. He gets it going right here. That was a little spinner of a breaking ball. Uh, very reminiscent of what Arroyo did early on the other night. Didn't have a good breaking ball, but finally found it about the fourth inning. So Council now five for 16 in the series. Here's Cameron waving at that for a strike. He's in at 264, 14 homers, 43 knocked in. In this series, he's played well, five for 12. Anchoring center field as well. In Cincinnati this year, big numbers 381, four homers, and 11 knocked in. This popped down the right field line, heading towards the seats. Well, Mike Cameron is really hitting the ball so much better now that he has all year long. He's coming off of June, in which, in his words, said, I forgot how to play baseball entirely. He hit 153 in June really didn't do much at all. He had one home run and six runs batted in and nearly 90 or 90 at bats. But boy he's hitting 400 here in July and a very hot hitter right now. Pop to the right side. Bado giving chase. And he'll get it. It looked as if it was heading about 10 rows deep. It just kept curving back. Cameron just drops his head and kicks his bat. Bado says thank you very much. Here's your four defensive alignment for the Reds. Cincinnati will have Dickerson in left, Tavares in center, Johnny Gomes gets another start in right. Around the infield for the start of this one, and Carnacion will be at third. The shortstop once again will be Jerry Harrison Jr. Phillips and Votto right side of the infield with Hannigan behind the plate. Here's Ryan Braun. He got yesterday off. He hit 310, 16 homers, 58 knocked in. Ken Maka wanted to give him a breather after 
attending the All Star game and really just you go to the All Star game you do everything they ask you to do you're pretty much exhausted plus he got hit on both hands by a pitch on Thursday night so he took yesterday off to just sit and watch and he's back in the lineup against Cueto two for eleven. The big power number 16 home runs 58 knocked in there's a rip towards the left field corner it'll go foul. Well, you better get your fastball in on him because he's like so many of these Milwaukee Brewer hitters love the ball away. Now Brian Brown will take that pitch it's away and actually pull it a lot of the rest of the guys in the lineup will go with it. Cueto trying to go in there but as you see that split the plate not exactly in on the inside corner. Very very dangerous hitter. Young career but already closing in on 100 home runs that's a strike on the inside corner only 13 away for 100 round trippers for his career. I mean baseball people marvel at him when he first came up and he came up two years ago in May and ended up winning rookie of the year but the fact that he got more votes than any other National League outfield over four million votes tells you that fans around the country are starting to take a liking to this young man too. Came up as a third baseman, now a left fielder. And what hands? I mean, there's some hitters that you look at. They have a big, wide swing. He just has big, strong hands. On the other side, Chase Utley, of course, we talk a lot about his hands, but this guy has strong hands. He really does, you know, George, because he's not all that big of a guy if you stand next to him. I mean, he's an average sized man, but he's got great hand eye coordination. Little different swing, though, on that low inside fastball that he did early on when he pulled that ball very sharply down the line. If you're going inside, get it down around the knees on him. One ball, two strikes. Plato pulls that into the left hand batter's box and it's two balls and two strikes. Well that's such a temptation for a pitcher to do you know you get ahead of a guy you pitch him inside you got him all set up for that slider and you want to snap off the slider of your life. And the problem is that you know your ambition gets ahead of your arm a little bit and you end up bouncing in the dirt. Good job by Hannigan to keep it under control. 2 2 council short lead off first. Inside and just did miss, so we'll go full three and two. Very seldom does Maka send runners, mighty send council here. In the first with a runner on first and one out, Braun at the plate. Might be worth a throw over. Mm -hmm. Well, Johnny Cueto has been real good in that category this year. In fact, he is among the best in the National League. He's only given up one stolen base. Reds catchers have thrown out two. So they pretty much do not run when Cueto's out there. And he's a strikeout pitcher. So if Braun swings through it, you could have a strike him out, throw him out. Council's going. There's the strike. There's the throw. Got him. Played right into the Reds' hands that time. Runner cut down. So Prince Fielder left in the on deck circle. The Reds go to work. Hannigan gunned down another. Tavares up when we return. Dusty hoping to end this short homestand with a W. We go to the bottom of the first. Let's check his starting lineup for this afternoon. Willie Tavares in the leadoff spot. Jerry Harrison Jr. at short will bat second. Joey Votto in at 344 and 12 homers. He'll hit in the number three position. And at home, similar numbers. Eight homers, 25 knocked in at home. Brandon Phillips will hit in the number four spot. Then Edwin Encarnacion, who's had a bounce back two weeks with the bat, he hits fifth. Chris Dickerson in the number six hole. Johnny Gomes, Ryan Hannigan, and Johnny Cueto. That's your red starting lineup. And here's Giovanni Gallardo, who's two and one against the Reds in his career. Well, he's pitched a good game against the Reds his last game out and a, uh, a very bad game very early in the year in Milwaukee against the Reds, where he walked a lot of batters. But he's a guy that will come right after you. Like Johnny Cueto, only 23 years old. But boy, does he have some very impressive numbers like that 203 opponent batting average to tell you what for to have his age and have a opponent batting average down there guys just don't hit him. He's got a good fastball and a good overhand curveball. Council can't get that so Tavares will be on. 
And we'll see how Dusty Baker plays it early. Tavares has been thrown out twice in this series. Comes in with 17 stolen bases. Another look. Well, you, that's what you want Willie Tavares to do is really not try to sit back and drive the ball. You just want him to be able to flare it somewhere. How about a little ground ball in the infield or a flare over the second baseman's head? It all means the same thing to Tavares because with his speed, you just wonder if they may press the running game here. Gallardo is an easy guy to run on. He has given up 11 stolen bases. They've only caught two. Kendall, 24 percent at throwing out runners. There he goes. Oh. Bunt attempt by Harrison is fouled off. There. Boy, it had to be. He had that base stolen by a mile. Uh, usually, Jerry Harrison is one of the best guys around as far as giving the runner, normally Willie Tavares, plenty of time in terms of number of pitches seen to steal a base. He must have thought it was a button run or a sacrifice. I'm not sure what it was. It was a straight steal by Tavares. Never did look back. So Willie back to first. One strike on Harrison in a 2.53. Seven homers, 25 knocked in. And he's in an 0-2 hole. Now keep in mind that Gallardo is a lot of gets a lot of strikeouts. He's got more strikeouts than innings pitch, but what he gets them on is this big overhand curveball that he throws, and that's also a good pitch to run on if you're at first base trying to steal a bag. In this series, three for ten. Harrison making his 16th start at short since Alex Gonzalez went down. And if you joined us late, Alex today sent on a rehab assignment down to Louisville. Scratch from a start with an elbow problem back in June. Went on the disabled list on the 22nd of June. Had arthroscopic surgery and looked good taking infield yesterday. So he's starting his rehab down at Louisville today. Which means that if everything goes okay, he could rejoin the Reds when they return from their road trip out west to Los Angeles and Chicago. Ripped, it is a fair ball into the corner. Tavares around second, heading to third. Mark Perry looking, he'll hold him up. It'll be second and third, nobody out. Ripped into the left field corner, a double for Harrison, his 15th of the season. Well, it didn't look very good for Jerry Harrison after getting down to the count. He gets a curveball that we were talking about, but Gallardo hangs it on the inner part of the plate, and Harrison rips a liner down the left field line. Very similar to last night when the Reds reached the first two in the inning and were unable to get anything done, but this time with second and third, Joey Votto steps to the plate. He has been the best RBI guy the Reds have to offer. He's number one with runners in scoring position, a figure that has been woeful for the Reds in the last two weeks. And on this homestand, it's been accentuated a five for 30 in this three game series to date. Joey, 344 at home, 344 on the season. One of three Reds now, over 300 with runners in scoring position going into tonight's ball game. Well, he's hitless in his last couple of nights, George, and we were talking about it. It doesn't seem like he really appears right now to be seeing the ball quite as well as he was even just about a week ago. Need a big hit here. Ahead in the count, two balls and a strike. Brandon Phillips on deck for Cincinnati. Nub the other way. That evens up at two balls, two strikes. For six at 167 against Gallardo. Good speed on the bases for the Reds. Right down Broadway. Vado caught looking. That's strikeout number one. Out number one in the first. Here comes Brandon Phillips, and here comes 
The Ford defensive alignment for this Milwaukee club, they're third in the league in defense, pretty solid. Braun didn't make an error last year, made only two this year. Cameron made an error earlier in the series that cost the Brewers a run. Hart, good arm and right. Gamble, Hardy, Council, Fielder across the infield, and Jason Kendall behind the plate. That's your Brewers Ford defensive alignment. Here's Brandon at 265. There's a shot in the center. That's going to drop. Rounding third. Coming to the plate will be Harrison. He'll score behind Tavares, and the Reds lead it 2 to nothing. Boy, they need big hits from number four, and that's a big one to give them an early 2 nothing lead. Well, last night it was a Milva lineup that had their chance to drive some runs in. They could not get it done, but here they get it done pronto. Brandon Phillips picks up Joey Votto after a strikeout and takes that first pitch and puts a little lob job in the center field. What a great jump on this ball by Jerry Harrison at second base. I mean, he knows immediately off the crack of the bat it's a base hit. There's no question about it. He's going to score without a throw. And Brandon Phillips drives in a couple. So Brandon now 62 runs batted in. He's on pace for another 2020 year of over 20 homers and 20 stolen bases after he had a six game hitting streak snap last night with his 0 for 4. He starts the day the right way today. Do nothing Cincinnati and here's Edwin in a 221. And Carnacion had his mini streak snap last night after being on base eight straight times and seven consecutive hits. He had an 0 for last evening. Phillips might push the running game as well down at first for the Reds. Not going, that's a little low. Brandon, second on the team with 13 stolen bases. He's been caught seven times. Trails only Tavares, who has 17 stolen bases for the Reds. That number we looked at prior to the game. Joey Votto, number one. Phillips, number two, producing runs batted in. Phillips is tagging at first, but he's going nowhere. Good arm and right from Hart, two away. And that'll bring up Dickerson. Dickerson steps in. He had a mini streak of five games snapped in the first game of this series. More importantly, he's back and healthy again after what initially Reds thought were back spasms. As it turned out, it was a dislocated rib. Steve Bauman, the trainer, finally located it as he examined him, and Mike Rolfe straightened him out, and he's fine, ready to go, and hopeful of putting some numbers up on this day. In at 271, couple of homers, 13 knocked in. Gallardo's two starts against the Reds. The first was back in April. He pitched five innings, allowed three hits and seven runs. He walked four, and that accounted for a lot of the runs that scored. The hits were placed at the right time by Cincinnati. The Reds won that game seven to six. Was the first loss for Gallardo in the season after an opening win at San Francisco. This one nubbed down to second. Council has it, but the Reds do some business. Brandon Phillips delivers a base hit. Two nothing Cincinnati heading to the second. Serious lawyers for serious injuries. Top of the order: Willie Tavares, Jerry Harrison Jr. For the Reds, five for 15 and four for 11. That's the way you want your table setters to produce, and so far so good on this day. The Reds get both of them on in the first and end up with a 2-0 lead thanks to a run scoring hit by that guy, Brandon Phillips. 
Here we go to the top of the second. Your Elk and Elk storylines brought to you by Elk and Elk, serious lawyers for serious injuries. If you're Dick Pohl, Dusty Baker, and the guy on the mound, this is the way you want to see Prince Fielder. Nobody on base, leading off an inning. Minimize whatever damage he can do against you. He's in at 308, 23 homers already, 81 knocked in, fresh off the championship in the home run derby in St. Louis. Against Cueto, he's three for 11 and a home run. Big swing, big numbers at the bottom of your screen there. Corey Hart, Matt Gamble will follow. Cardinals will play later on. Arizona will wrap up their series. It's a 2:15 Eastern Time start. Cubs in Washington scoreless in the first. Philadelphia and Florida scoreless in the first as well, and the Pirates in San Francisco scoreless. Pittsburgh's pitching has been outstanding at home against the Giants in their series. Colorado at San Diego, Mets at Atlanta. And Houston at LA still to come in the National League. One ball, two strikes. Johnny looks for his sign from Hannigan. They'll go through him one more time. Wants it up. He got it up and it's banged into the right center field alley. Three hops to the wall. And Prince Fielder will pick up his 23rd double of the season. So 23 doubles to go along with 23 homers for the first baseman for the Brewers. Well, I think when Ryan Hannigan wanted it up, he didn't want it just above the waist. He wanted it up here somewhere. But you see where the ball was just above the waist. And that's good hitting zone for Prince Fielder. Actually, you throw a pitch right there and all he gets is a double. It's almost a little minor victory on the pitcher's part right there just for keeping it in the ballpark. Very dangerous place to try to pitch because your margin of error is so slim there. So runner at second, nobody out. Here's Hart in at 260. Nine homers, 36 knocked in. At a subpar first half. He tries to get the ball to the right side. He does. Gomes has a drop in front of him, and it'll be first and third. I don't think he saw the ball well, and I think he thought it might have been hit harder than it was, almost off the end of the bat, and it bloops in front of Gomes. So that'll be first and third instead of an out. And a runner at second. Now Johnny's made some pretty good plays over the last couple of nights. This is not one of them at all. In fact, he stops right as that ball ends up at his feet. I guess if he left his feet and dives at that ball, there's a possibility he still makes it. But, you know, when you misjudge it early on, it's sometimes tough to recover when you don't have a lot of speed. Big swing and a bloop results in a base hit. So it's first and third. The first two are on here in the second for the Brewers. And here comes Matt Gamble. Side corner. Down at first, Hart seven stolen bases. He's been caught four times, so you can't forget about him down there. Hannigan holds it there, doesn't get the call, a ball and a strike. Each getting a chance to show what they can do with the bat down at third. Billy Hall's almost fallen out of the third base rotation completely after his struggles and have, has his average under 200. Dribble foul to the right side. Well, they expect long term from Matt Gambles that this guy is just simply going to come up here, finally get it at the major league level, and really start to rake. Right now, they're playing also Casey McGee at third base, who's somewhat of a minor league journeyman and who's kind of come into this major league level a little bit late. But Gamble's still a very young guy, 24 years old in a couple of days. 
Perfect spot for Johnny Cueto. He went to school on that one. That's strikeout number two for Cueto. Well, controlling the glove side of the plate is what Johnny Cueto did in the first half, and that's why he had such a successful start, being able to throw your fastball there in the low to mid-90s. And, you know, when you can do that, you can control right-handers and left-handers alike. That is not an easy pitch to locate as a right-handed pitcher. But when you get out in front of your front knee and drive to the plate, and put the kind of zip on it that Cueto can, you'll send a lot of guys packing. And Chris, the only way you can't control that is to have his kind of velocity, huh? I mean, normal right handers, if you don't have that, you leave yourself susceptible trying to go in there. Well, you can still get it in there, but don't miss over the plate. And if for Cueto, you don't want to miss over the plate either. And it's a matter really of keeping that front side closed. I mean, David Weathers will tell you that he found that secret up a few years ago where you as you come out of your your balance point you really point your shoulder or your elbow whatever your your guide is right to that spot. Uh, Arthur Rose does the same thing and it keeps them locked in to make sure when they miss they miss it off the plate not over the dish. One ball to Hardy the shortstop in at 232 Reds double play depth middle of the infield hoping to turn one and get out of this jam. This is a player who's susceptible. He's hit into 11 double play ground balls this year. Down to third, but foul. That rolls past the third base coach for the. There's a peek at the mechanics of Johnny Cueto. Brad Fisher, your third base coach, and as usual, down in first, Eddie Cedar for the Brewers. That ball looked like it was almost going to slip out of Cueto's hand. He kind of lofted it over there after. Hart dove back into the bag. Roll, knock down. They will get one at second, and that's all the run will score. Good job by Harrison to glove it and get the force, but a run scores. It's a 2 1 game. A good job just to be able to get it out out of this play because the ball was hit sharply and hit in the hole at between third and short. Diving play by Harrison. Boy, we've made him, made him. We have seen him make some really terrific defensive plays, no matter where you stick him. And he seems to be always diving for a ball one way or another. And that was a big one right there to pick up and out. Hardy gets another run batted in. That's 43 for Hardy. He would be in third. Place on the Reds as far as RBIs on the season behind Votto and behind Phillips. But here he is batting the number seven spot for the for the Brewers. That just goes to show you the differences in the offense that each of these managers have at their disposal. Brewers produced about three quarters of a run more per game than the Reds do. And it starts with the two big guys, obviously. And if there's a key to the second half, it's going to be Hart and Hardy. Putting those kind of numbers up. Jason Kendall in at 241 for his first at bat, four for nine in his career against Cueto. Well, if you're Jason Kendall, I mean, you have been all over the map as far as where you bat in the lineup. I mean, he bats in the second spot. He's let off here before. He bats, he's batted somewhere around the middle. Now he's down just close to the very bottom of the order. Last year in the number nine spot, yeah. some of the time, too. Look out, and Carnacion gets in front of Harrison, and it'll go as a base hit. Should have been an out, though. Could have been an out. And Carnacion went way too far into Harrison's area, and almost a collision that would have allowed the runner to go to third. Yeah, George, but watch this bounce here. I think it hits something in the infield. I'm not saying that there's even a pebble in that infield, but look how high that thing bounces right there. It's like there's a, a sewer lid planted under that grass somewhere. The ball goes boom. No I don't think, I don't think anybody there. this side of uh, Shaq gets that ball. 
We've seen Edwin do that a couple of times though. He almost cuts yeah. into the shortstop's path. I mean, you're generally told cut across towards the first base bag. Yeah. So two on, two out, and here's Gallardo. One hit with a runner in scoring position at a homer this year. In at 125. Yeah, that hit was a game. It was a home run. And he pitched a one nothing win, I think, in that ball game. He will not get cheated with his swing. Single started it for the Brewers. A fielder's choice gets a run in. And it's a one run ball game. Guido trying to keep it right there. Out in front swing and a miss two and two. Just reminding us that that home run that he did hit. Talk about you tell your kids about this later on. It was off Randy Johnson. <laughs> Not this time. Cueto gets the out he wants. Three strikeouts for Johnny. Brewers score a run. It's a 2 1 game. Cueto do up third when we return. Sign if a Reds player hits the sign or the car in today's game, Billy Lefevers of Trenton, Ohio, is going to win it. Register for your chance to win during an upcoming game at your Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealers. Got everything you need. Got your uniform, got your hat, got your drink. It's like the Welsh family at the Ponderosa sitting and watching the game today. Right here. They're under the sky to watch baseball at Great American Ballpark. Gomes, Hannigan, Cueto do up as we go to the bottom of the second. Johnny at 302, five homers, 16 knocked in. For the series, Johnny one for six, a couple of walks and a run scored. Told you about the Gallardo loss to the Reds back in April. In May, he won a game that the Brewers won five to two. A different story for him. Pitched five and a third. Walked only two. Gave up two runs. Left with the lead and was credited with the victory. That stretched his record to five and two back on the 31st of May. And no, Chris, the, uh, the Brewers don't have CC Sabathia and Ben Sheets, but this is a pretty darn good rotation if everybody's healthy, especially if they do get Dave Bush back. Well, if they get Bush back, yes, and if they get Manny Parra to pitch the way he has his last couple of times out, you know, that may preclude them from being able to or need the need to go out and get a pitcher because according to Doug Melvin and, and a lot of the people that we've talked to, George, there's not a whole lot out there as far as help when it comes to starting pitching. And anything that is is going to cost you a lot of in return. Certainly nobody the caliber of CC Sabathia except for Roy Halliday. And the asking price right now for Halliday evidently is extremely high. Now you're talking and I mean we were there three weeks ago now and even then JP Ricciardi said if we ever get to that point we'd ask for a lot and that has gone up from there. Mm -hmm. I mean you're talking yeah. about three premier players. One or two best players from your minor league system, possibly a major leaguer or someone major league ready as well. 
you know the difference last year and I really think I mean it was a stroke of genius on Doug Melvin's part not only did he get CC Sabathia but he got him a month before the trading deadline exactly so they got three starts right around the all-star break so he had I think he got five starts before the trading deadline would have hit anybody you get now you're talking about basically two months swing and a miss Gallardo delivers and Gomes strikes out second strike out for Gallardo one away here's he in again. This is a pretty good at bat that Giovanni Gallardo does on Johnny Gomes. He mixed a couple of breaking balls in early in the count and then sneaks a fastball by him inside later on. One thing about Gomes, he doesn't shorten the swing very much with two strikes. So he'll strike out, but when he connects with a big swing like that, he often launches. Here's Hand again in at 329, a homer and eight knocked in. One for seven in the series. Starting his third straight game in the series, one of the Reds' hotter players at 329 overall, Homer eight knocked in. A couple of days off for Ramon Hernandez. Coming back from a gimpy leg. And Hannigan's getting a chance to catch on a semi regular basis here. Against the Brewers. Line caught by Council. Council playing him perfectly, about two steps towards the second base bag, and that's the difference between a base hit and that play by the Brewers' second baseman. Brian Hannigan so often hits the ball up the middle that you really need to be shading him that way and almost going that way with the pitch like that if you're a defender. Nearly got it in there, just happened to be the second baseman. There he is again, the old Sandsburg getting in the way of the Reds' progress. You ever had a Sandsburg in your heel walking down the beach, George? He's one of those guys that if he's on the other team, he's a Sandsburg. If he's on your team, you love him. Huh? Oh, no doubt. <laughs> and you know what you also like about him? Those are the old style glasses. Yeah. His dad taught him right. You know, it, it probably his dad's glasses because yep. you can't find those anymore. <laughs> it's not no longer stylish to wear the flip downs, but he got them. Well, the only problem is he, he has another set of those in his car. <laughs> A dirt ball player makes his team better wherever you put him. What? And they're fortunate to have him this year. Ricky Weeks went down, and Ricky. But just starting to round into shape. They expected a big year from Weeks. There went a lot of their stolen base game, and there went some power too. Council's taking over at second base. Weeks out for the year with still another wrist injury. Hopeful of being back 100% next year. Three balls, one strike to Johnny Cueto. Yanni takes the free pass. That's the first walk issued by Gallardo, and here comes Tavares. The Reds rolling with a base hit to center in the first inning. Harrison followed with a double to put runners at second and third, and Phillips played it in both with a single to center. Those are the two runs that the Reds have on your scoreboard here in the second inning. Well, a fake bunt by Willie Tavares right there. You'd think would bring the third baseman, Matt Gamble, in a little bit, but he's only about even with the bag, which isn't nearly close enough to home plate to get Tavares if he drops a decent bunt down. Strike. If you're Willie Tavares right here, you're not thinking about driving a run in. You're not even thinking about going first to third with the runner. You're just trying to think about keeping the inning alive. He deadens it perfectly. Down the right field line. Cueto's going to go to third. And smartly, 
Tavares stays at first. Great job by Hart and Council both to get there. And that prevented Tavares from going to second. Cueto does go to third. Had a couple of hits last night and a couple of hits so far and two at bats this afternoon for Willie Tavares. And boy, strange things happen when you bunt like that. It seems like fielders make plays of desperation. You know, all in all, Jason Kendall, if he had to do that again, probably wouldn't even throw that ball. Because he's off balance. He's going one way, trying to throw another. Here's a guy speeding down the line, and Prince Fielder's not going to get himself in the way of that runner. So you keep the inning alive. That's exactly what Tavares needed to do. So it goes as a base hit in an error. Twenty fourth for the Reds of the infield variety. And the Reds with bunt hits and infield hits at the top of this order from either Tavares or Harrison when they've used them it's resulted in better offense for this ball club. Let's see if this will parlay into something with two outs first and third. Here's Harrison who doubled first time up. And let's see if Willie will try to take second here too. Harrison peeks down at Mark Barry who rolls two signs for him as usual Billy Hatcher down in the first base box for Cincinnati. And you'll see a second baseman kind of mosey over towards first on a play like that. Council was planted on the line, and it was only his quick recovery to dive for the ball and knock it down that prevented Tavares from being in scoring position, too. I mean, Willie was planning to go to second, and he realized that Council was right next to him. A little by little, we're learning all the signs, huh? <laughs> When you see that going back and forth from one fight to another by Jason Kendall, that means give the old fake the third and then look at first play. That's either throw to first or give me an outside fastball. Well, Harrison strikes out, so the Reds will strand a pair. They don't score in the second. They've stranded three through two, but lead it two to one. Go to dot com. By JTM. Food, family, and fun. It's JTM. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on your car insurance. Visit us at geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. And by Jeep, you talk, we listen. It's a new day. Have fun out there in your beep beep Jeep. Everybody's fan favorite at the ballpark today. Been a great weekend. Mr. Red, Rosie Red, everybody around, and the Reds hopeful of coming up with a W on this Sunday afternoon. Nothing greater than sitting with your son or daughter watching a baseball game. That's how you learn the game. Or sitting at home, those of you in the living room can talk some baseball too. Here we go to the third. Greg Council, who singled the right and was out trying to steal in the first, will lead it off, followed by Cameron and then Braun. Johnny Cueto already at the 40 pitch count after two innings. Hit hard, but right at the Gold Glover. Council retired. Here comes Cameron. Hey, the Reds and Subway restaurants are teaming up to offer you a great deal. It's the $5 fielder's choice for a limited time at Subway restaurants. Choose from a $5 foot long sub or a $5 fresh value meal featuring eight great subs. Either way, you're a winner. Subway, eat fresh. Cameron popped out to Votto first time up in foul territory. The 
that's on the schedule have one more visit to Milwaukee. That'll be in August the 25th, 26th, and 27th. This represents the final time Milwaukee will be here in Cincinnati. I'm sure you've got your golf already set for that third week of August in Milwaukee. One of the better golf cities in the National League, I can tell you that, George. That's popped through on the left side. Cameron has a hit, his sixth hit in the series. Your Honda standings update for today. Start of play today. The Cardinals a two-game lead over the Cubs and the Brewers. Houston three back and Cincinnati five and a half back four games under 500 in the division in the central the Cardinals are six games over 500 25 and 19 the Brewers are nine games over 500 at 25 and 16 the two best records in the division the Reds coming in are two games over 22 and 20. He struck out first time up with Council on first and one out. They sent Council. Braun struck out. It was a strike him out, throw him out, double play. comparison George between last year and this year well last year the record identical to this year but the difference of course being the fact is that the league is not running away from the Reds they had more home runs last year they had a little bit of a higher earned run average I'm surprised the earned run average this year isn't significantly better but the batting average overall is just just about the same really the major difference right there is the fact that the rest of the league is staying closer to the pack than it was last season in particular the Cubs yeah I mean the Cubs were at this point of last year the odds on favorite to win the division they were playing outstanding baseball and the question a year later is will they play the kind of baseball they're capable of in the second half once they get everybody back yeah, I bet if you had asked a hundred people that question at 90 games where were the Reds last year compared to this year I think probably 90 of them would be wrong. I mean, without knowing the numbers, I would have been wrong. I think it's a much more fun team to watch this year. And as we've talked about it before, this is a, a team coming out of spring training that Dusty Baker said, this is finally the kind of team that I wanted to manage, a team that has speed and pitching. But the offense has been somewhat lacking, and that's why they're still looking up at 500. Plato. And they do get an out at second they will give the out to Harrison saying that the ball popped out of his glove so they'll get a force at second and it's a second time in two games that the Reds lose an opportunity for it look like a tailor made double play and this is a tailor made double play Johnny Cueto doesn't have to rush this he's got to throw the ball hard to second base he throws a little lob shot right there and you know yeah you're going to get an out at second but what he should do is take one more crow hop towards second and then deliver the ball hard chest high to the covering shortstop and Harrison would have been able to turn that double play no problem. Darrell Cousins saying he's pulling the ball out of his glove and if you look at the replay and it didn't look like it initially it looked like Jerry Harrison Jr. gets the benefit of that it looked like the ball was slipping out of the glove before he ever got his hand on it. Well, sometimes those infielders are so quick with their hands the ball really never even gets in their glove. Like it gets a second base and just changes direction direction somehow. The Reds take the out second out of the inning so bronze on. Here's Prince doubled in the second and scored on a fielder's choice. Now the other difficulty Chris you know because you've been there but you know it seems simple and those people that have to throw out a first pitch experience it making a defensive play on the mound and throwing either a the top of a mound or the bottom of a mound sometimes lends to a throw like that. You're right about that and you're right about him getting the benefit of the call right there because 
That's one thing the second base umpire Daryl Cousins did not see is that ball really never hitting the, the throwing hand of, of Harrison. That ball simply went right out of the glove. We'll take the out though. One ball, one strike. That's a strike, one and two. You know, the mound can present a presence from a standpoint of balance, but these guys practice that that PFP, that ground ball back to you, covering first, spinning and throwing the second so many times that it really ought to be second nature. The problem is, is that you're in the game and you got adrenaline going and you're thinking, wow, I got a double play ball, and you need to feel the need to get rid of it as quickly as possible. And sometimes that's not always the best thing to do, but boy, trying to control your emotions out there is the hard part. What do you tell young pitchers to, to get comfortable on the mound? Is it just keep taking ground balls, keep making plays? Yeah. Do that and breathe. Don't forget to breathe. <laughs> That's right. You're right. Take a deep breath in life. One ball, two strikes. Takes a little bigger lead down at first. Here's the one two to fielder. Deep to right, forget it. Gomes can only watch as this one heads halfway up the moon deck. Ahead in the count, one and two. Prince Fielder delivers his second career homer off Cueto, his second hit of the ball game, and Milwaukee takes a 3 2 lead. Well, ahead in the count is the key part right there, and I know what Cueto and Hannigan are trying to do. They're trying to come inside, but that ball just floats right back over the middle, and instead of being inside on the corner or off the plate, it pretty much slices the dish right in half, and boy, up there like that, Prince Fielder doesn't even have to get a whole lot of it. You give him the elevation by throwing the ball up around the letters. All he has to do is put the wood to it. That guy's a good hitter. Can't make a mistake. Simple as that. 24 homers for Prince now. Add two more to his RBI total. 83 runs batted in. Boy, is he heading towards a mammoth year. He's on a pace for over 140 runs batted in. That would obliterate the Milwaukee record of RBI set by Cecil Cooper back in 1983. That'll get. Hart, so Hart is plunked. A two out hit batsman. Run around with two away, and here comes Gamble. And the one thing that he's really taken to heart, Prince Fielder has, is a better eye at the plate. He's walking more this year. Well, he's doing a lot more this year, George, than ever before. He's assumed the role of leadership full time. He comes to the ballpark focused. He's no nonsense. I mean, he's a guy that a lot of scouts had big question marks about when they scouted him as an amateur as to whether he would keep his weight down and be able to play in the major leagues, whether he could keep his focus, and he has answered every one of those questions. Gamble bounces this one into right field. Hart's going to take the turn. He'll go to third, and we'll get there easily. So a hit batter and another base hit and Johnny's in another jam first and third with two away Hardy coming to the plate. Now right now I'm not sure what Johnny Cueto is doing except kind of throwing the ball down in the middle of the plate he starts that pitch on the outer part and it's a slider that comes right back to the center. That'll send Hart the long legged right fielder from first to third.
Check up from Dick Pole. Hannigan joins him on the mound. And here comes Hardy. Here's JJ. Thought he had a base hit, a diving stop by Harrison turned it into a fielder's choice, but that got Prince Fielder home in the second with the first run for Milwaukee. He's got first and third. for Johnny were only in the third inning. Sounded like a broken bat. Loop to left. Back is Dickerson and he'll haul it in. But damage done. And you know who does it for the Brewers? Prince Fielder's 24th homer 3-2 Milwaukee. Day July 30th with the Senior Citizen Specials presented by He'll Hear Better. The Reds take on the San Diego Padres at 1235. Fans ages 60 and older can purchase selected non-premium tickets at half price in advance of game day only. For your tickets call 381 Reds or go to Reds.com. Here's Joey. Mano struck out looking first time up. There's a shot in the center, a base hit. Leadoff hitter on for the Reds here in the third. Brandon he delivered in the first after base hits by Tavares and Harrison. He delivered a base hit that played it too. Joey down at first and Carnacion on deck. Dribbled in front of the plate. They'll go to first this time Kendall makes a fine play and gets Brandon Phillips for the Reds send Joey Votto to second on the Two to three put out. Good play by Jason Kendall defensively. Same kind of play that Jason Kendall threw away with Willie Tavares running down the line just an inning ago. And he makes that one nice and gets Phillips by a step. Well, that's dead. about a perfect swinging bunt right there. But you know, Kendall here in his late 30s, still pretty mobile behind the dish. He gets out of there and makes a nice play. Did it just the way his dad, Freddie, taught him how to do it. <laughs> One of the best catching instructors you'll come across. Jason's dad, Freddie Kendall, former major leaguer, one time in the Reds organization, too. And if that guy wants to, he could be an outstanding coach or manager someday. You wonder if he would. Hey, fans, text the word Fox to 37664 to win great Fox Sports Ohio prizes. The 500 text will win. Text the word Fox to 37664. Tying run scoring position for the Reds. Here's Edwin. He locked him up with that swing, and it's one ball and two strikes. Gallardo has the full package. I mean, he has enough velocity to be a dominant pitcher. He's got great movement, and when he hits his spots, 
And with the tutelage of a guy like Kendall behind the plate, he can be a dominant pitcher. Well, it was his absence in the rotation of the Brewers last year that really caused Doug Melvin, the general manager, to have a need to go out and try to fill that with a pitcher. You wonder if the Brewers would even have gone out and gotten CC Sabathia had Giovanni Gallardo been healthy all year. He hurt his knee last year. He only made four starts. And he didn't have any wins or losses, but he had a 1.8 earned run average. And he was beginning to show that he would be one of the better pitchers in the league with the kind of stuff that he had shown in 07 when he went 9 and 5 as a rookie and only 20 years old and last year. But that knee injury sidelined him, and that's when the Brewers went out and got CC Sabathia to, to complete the rotation. Down the stretch, they need Gallardo. They need the guy that pitched last night, Manny Parra. Two balls, two strikes, Vado off second. Bill Miller saying, uh uh, he didn't go around, so it's full three and two. I think the one sense that you get as we talk to we usually talk to Walt Jockett either as general manager but with Doug Melvin in town too and every general manager we've talked to in the last week to 10 days they're saying pretty much the same thing that those that have parts that are desired via the trade are wanting so much that it's becoming less and less likely that there'll be multiple trades or meaningful trades as you head to the trading deadline. I mean Halliday may be traded Holiday may be traded but it will take a stiff price in our teams especially middle market teams willing to, to do that. I mean the, the big money teams can take on contracts and look at things differently than a, a Milwaukee or a Cincinnati. Oh yeah I mean if you're a big market ball club and we're going to see a big market ball club this coming week when we go visit the Los Angeles Dodgers Georgie you know the pitcher that's going to be pitching for the Dodgers tomorrow Jason Smith right now being paid fifteen point seven million dollars by the Dodgers he has never uh, he hasn't pitched in twenty five months. But they can write that off really no problem at all with the way that they draw their television contract they've got the cash to be able to you know essentially eat that kind of a contract and move on. On the other hand you know you've got Doug Melvin of the Milwaukee Brewers and a, an eight million dollar price tag on Billy Hall. Billy Hall that you know they're not sure what to do with Billy Hall he's struggling this year he's a great guy but they, they like to eat the contract but they don't have the kind of resources to be able to recover from that much less two or three you know 10 or 15 million dollar contracts like some of these teams can and that's the biggest difference uh, that a middle market and small market general manager runs into when he talks about trading he may have some chips in the minor leagues but boy they're even more precious to a small market team than they are to a big market team and what is that balance point when do you give up something that is a prize for you in the future to make a run this year. I mean the Brewers did it last year giving up Matt LaPorta to get CC Sabathia and the, the Reds have been faced with similar discussions not decisions yet but certainly discussions on the possibility of bettering the Reds ball club. Ken Maka was there in Oakland and very often early in his tenure they brought players in late in his tenure they unloaded players when he was the manager and Billy being the general manager in Oakland. One ball, two strikes. Dickerson will step out, and take a breather. Now the other thing that is becoming a probability is that not all the deals will be made before the trading deadline. There may be some deals made in August when teams try to sneak people through waivers. You'll see who clears waivers. So unlike last year, where a couple of major deals came early, this particular year there may be two, three, four deals after August the first. You think there ought to be a rule in baseball that every team needs to make one deal before <laughs> the training deadline just to kind of keep things interesting. <laughs> There's a swing and a miss. <laughs> I'll tell you, you make you me commissioner, commissioner and I'd have these baseball rules look like the tax code. Remember the in Toronto when Pat Gillick was the general manager they had a little box at the on the sports page that showed how many how many days that the Blue Jays had gone without making a deal. But Pat Gillick 
stuck by his guns and eventually put together a winning club. He yeah. did the same thing in Philadelphia. So what fans want does not always translate to what's best for the organization. Mm -hmm. The teams that win over the long haul are the ones that are able to put together. Here's Johnny Gomes are the ones that put together a, a management style and an on field style that meshes and everybody's on the same page meaning the owner the general manager and the manager are all working for the same thing that doesn't always happen instead of a trade deadline it's the mandatory trade deadline Here's Johnny Gomes Gallardo bouncing back he got ahead 0 and 2 to Dickerson before he struck him out now he's ahead 0 and 2 to Gomes Johnny bounced out first time up. Center a base hit. Here comes Votto around third. He's going to score. Edwin will stop at second. So Johnny Gomes delivers his 17th run batted in a bullet. And you talk about the mistake that Johnny Cueto made. Here's a mistake from Gallardo. It is a mistake from Gallardo because he struck him out on an inside fastball the first time up, but he hangs the breaking ball right there, and Johnny Gomes lays the wood to it. A liner in the left center field. With two outs, no problem at all for Joey Votto. He'll take a look over his shoulder. He'll come chugging around there to tie this ball game up. So ahead 0 and 2. Gallardo makes a mistake and Gomes delivers. We're tied at three, and here comes Hannigan and Carnacion scoring position at second. Gomes down at first. Thing you talk about, you know, should there be a mandatory trade? The one thing that, that a lot of baseball people believe in that is currently not allowed but has been debated should teams be allowed to trade draft picks? If you don't have enough money, if you're a small market team and you can't sign a number one draft pick, should you be allowed to trade that draft pick? Right now, teams cannot trade draft Correct. Picks. One of the only sports where you can't do it. Right now what happens is a lot of the teams who don't have money to sign those top draft picks will draft somebody in the first round who really wouldn't be a maybe a five or six or tenth round player and come to a pre draft agreement with them. Say hey we'll give you this much money will you sign as a number one pick. The Nationals still dealing with Steven Strasburg and Scott Moore is trying to get that deal done. That's a strike in the outside corner one and two. Red still trying to. Get their deal done with their first round draft pick, Mike Leak. Although I think because of the innings that he has pitched this year, the no the, real rush. The, yeah, the the urgency is not there. They're not going to pitch him a lot this summer anyhow. So many college pitchers that go to the postseason have pitched more than they probably should have. And looking at the future, I think in many cases, their drafting teams will give them a good chunk of this year off. Down and away. Hanning and doesn't like the call. But a strikeout number five on the afternoon for Gallardo. The Reds tie it though on the hit by Gomes. Affleck. You know what that sounds like. That's our Affleck trivia question. Who is the only person to manage both the Reds and the Brewers? The only person to manage both the Cincinnati Reds and the Brewers. Are coming up for you. Our Aflac Gym of the Day. Here's Jason Kendall to lead it off as we head to the top of the fourth facing Cueto. Johnny already 58 pitches on the afternoon. First, we watch every fifth day Johnny Cueto go to the mound and we looked at the numbers. What did he do in the first half? What the first half of the first half? And his numbers, his ERA up in the second half. Of course, that's skewed by the one bad inning he had. But what do you see different in Johnny Cueto today that has changed from that stretch where he pitched five straight starts in a row that were outstanding? Well, you know, 
you, you talk about the a lot of people say the game of baseball is a marathon and not a sprint and what happens is your strong arms come out of spring training you've had a lot of rest they don't work you very hard down there and you can get by with a lot of stuff because your fastball especially a young guy like Cueto is so live but after you start getting some innings on you and Cueto is now up over 100 innings you know then it becomes a grind and you have to measure yourself a little bit more. And you have to prepare yourself a little bit differently. And I think that when you reach back and try to add something on those particular days when you don't have a lot of zip, you try to do more with it. And that's when I find Johnny Cueto falling off towards first base, uh, trying to get himself offline a little bit, trying to generate the same fastball and the same break on the slider that he had early on when his arm felt fresh. And that's the biggest thing. You just have to learn how to pitch when you're tired. Learn how to pitch when you're in the middle of the season and kind of in your dog days. And it's still a learning process. I mean, he looks a little smoother today than he did his last couple of times out, at least in my book. You know, sometimes when you're when you reach back and it's not there, the best thing to do is not reach back and try to throw harder, but just try to throw a little bit less, but at a spot that's going to be better for you. He's pitched well. He's only made one mistake, and that was to a real good hitter in Prince Fielder. Oh, another rough hop. That one hit right on the edge of the grass in the dirt. Looked like it got Edwin Encarnacion right about the collarbone of the neck. Almost clipped him right on the chin. Is that sewer lid down there again? Ooh. Maybe last night while we were sleeping, they put a underground utility line right there. Does he get the right hand up to deflect it? Yes, he does. What? So that'll go as a base hit for Kendall. Lead off hitter on. Here's Gallardo. Red's expecting a bunt from him. It's a good one. That'll work as a sacrifice. So a sacrifice for Gallardo. Go ahead, run, sitting down at second. With one out, back to the top of the order, Craig Council. Stealing threat now with age of the injuries, no longer much of base stealing threat, but an outstanding base runner. He'll always check the outfielders, check his infielders at every pitch. Checks his third base coach to see what might be on. One ball, one strike, one out, and counsel at the plate. Nips the outside corner does Cueto. It's one and two. How about that last two pitches. The first one you get the the pitcher mad at you. The second <laughs> one you get the batter mad at you. They look like the same pitch. You know you're doing a good job umpiring and nobody's happy. Exactly. If they're both sides are barking, you got to be doing something right. Smothered by a Hannigan. Like the old saying about a legal agreement. You know, when you've got a good legal agreement with both attorneys walk away from the table feeling like they got the short end. But then they both let you think that they both won, right? And then, you get, <laughs> then you get your bill. Yep. <laughs> and that's when they won. <laughs> Lawyers never lose. I'm going to get some letters about that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Probably certified. As long as they're not ticking. He holds on it and it's full three and two. So three pitches in question and 
each dugout has had a chance and the pitcher on the mound has had a chance as well as the batter to question. Three two one out. There's ball four. After a trivia answer any guesses Chris the those that have managed I know in terms of coaches uh, Dave Bristol Russ Nixon come to mind. Um, I don't think Pete Buchanan ever he was never an interim manager with Milwaukee He was an interim manager every place he is else. A professional interim I'm manager but I have no idea here. That's a good question. Dave Bristol that makes yeah, sense. Big Dave. But the Reds in 66 through 69 and with the Brewers in the 70s. And back with the Reds again of course is Tony Perez's third base coach when Tony had a brief stint. Now that was brief 44 games no chance for Tony to put his imprint on the Reds at all. And I think he learned a lesson <laughs> both there and in Florida. It's not worth the aggravation to manage in this day and age. You know he can. It's hit to left. Here comes Dickerson. Got it. Runners will hold back to first and second. Cameron retired. Well, so far so good with Cueto dealing with Braun. He struck him out, had him bounce back to the mound. And again, you think back on that play in the third inning. There was a ground out, the base hit by Cameron. Braun hit one right back to Cueto. He made the poor throw to second. They did get the force, but if they get the double play, the inning's over. Fielder never comes to the plate. As it was, Fielder came to the plate. A two run homer gave Milwaukee the 3 2 lead at that point. So it's not always the obvious error, it's not always the obvious play that results in earn run averages changing or in games being lost. It's the plays that you should make that aren't made that turn a game around, turn an inning around. Two on, two out for Braun. Sawed him off. Sounded like another broken bat. Glove by Encarnacion. Brewers strand a pair. Still. Time for our guy code direct quote of the day. I felt fine, no pain, can't wait. I don't know where the mound is right now. That's Edinson Volquez. Edinson long toss yesterday under the tutelage of Mark Mann and after he long toss we asked him how do you feel I feel great the next stage is how did he feel today and when he came to the park I asked him he said I feel tremendous I can't wait to get on the mound it's been a long time since he's been up there and Reds are keeping their fingers crossed that it'll be another step towards coming back it's, a, it's still a long road away for Edinson Volquez Chris it'll, if he is OK and you really won't know until he gets up on a mound and you get a couple of opportunities to throw off a mound if they can start to pencil him in for a rehab but you're talking about starting spring training all over again. Here's Kendall. He flips down to fielder and Cueto's retired for the first out of the fourth. Well it just gives you an indication George just because of the the silence surrounding the news of Edinson Volquez leads you to believe that the injury was a little more serious than originally diagnosed or that they had thought it's taken him a long time if it's just sent tendonitis and swelling in there it takes a long time to come back from that but He's been even longer than expected. And from what he told me, he's not even cut loose yet. He's played some long toss, but it's been lobbing long toss. He won't throw hard until he gets on the mound. So that's the difference right there. And even that first mound session that he's going to have planned for tomorrow uh, is going to be one that's only going to be from seven to ten minutes, which is very equivalent to the first mound session you have the very first day you show up in spring training. 
So it uh, will be a little while for Volquez. They're going to take care of his arm as best as they can, and that's what they should do. Here's Tavares on base twice, a base hit to center, and a infield hit, the 24th infield hit for the Reds this year. And I mean, we don't know anything. The Reds haven't told us anything, but just knowing other pitchers that have gone through what Edinson is going through. I mean you're talking probably about a 50 50 proposition whether he would need surgery or not so the Reds are erring on the side of very cautious mm -hmm. and if there is a chance to get through this without surgery they'll try that route if not then Dr. Kremchek will be on the case again. Well the diagnostic tools they have now I mean they can essentially look inside your elbow and see what's wrong with it so they've got a pretty good idea whether you know if he really needed it he'd be already been cut on. Uh, so they obviously think that this is something that they can manage. Hopefully so. The interesting thing is that Quayar that is that Edinson Volquez has never had really any arm problems mm -hmm. ever. So this is all new for him and it's kind of scary. Fly ball out from Tavares two away. Here's Jerry Harrison Jr. By the way you saw Mark Mann who's been on the road to recovery the Reds trainer after his ankle injury he's back in a normal shoe finally and ready to go on the road trip but we want to send uh, our get well wishes to his dad Miller who I mean this is what happens you try to play softball again as you get on no, he in didn't. years yes he did no he did torn rotator cuff and Dr. K patched him up he'll be playing with the grandkids again soon but good health good luck quick recovery if you got in there on Tuesday would have done your elbow double two for the price of one from what I understand on Tuesdays. I think it was Thursday and I think that was knee and shoulder day. You get okay. two for price of one knee. Hard to keep up, you know. <laughs> I get that flyer every week. Don't you get the email alerts? Woo! Nobody better than Dr. Timothy Kremchak. Doc Hollywood. There's Harrison. Pop foul. Given Chase is fielder, he'll run out of room. Jerry doubled in the first. That put runners at second and third for Brandon Phillips, who singled in two. That gave the Reds a 2 0 lead in the first inning. Brewers came back with a run of their own in the second. And then the two run homer by fielder gave them a 3 2 lead in the third. And the Reds tying run, scoring on the base hit by Gomes in the third. That's a call strike three snuck it in underneath the outstretched arms Gallardo picks up strikeout number six we're still tied at three. AT&T the nation's fastest 3G network AT&T your world delivered. Great to have you with us George Grant Chris Welch up here in the booth. Jesse Jackson Mark Wagner with us as usual. Jim Strickler got the weather right today. He's got it right today. Still to come Reds live post game with Jim Day Jeff Pecoro. Don in the truck our producer. Brian Hunterman our director Bob Pennell. There's a looper into center. That's a base hit for Prince Fielder. His third hit, a single, a double, and a homer for Fielder today. Well, the guy's beginning to see the ball extremely well. He's right on top of the dish, which he kind of dares you to pitch the ball inside. And if you miss in, you hit him. If you miss over the plate, he whacks it pretty hard. That ball got in on him a little bit. But still quick enough to fight off a good fastball by Cueto, and he has reached base three times in a row. He just needs a triple for the George Grand favorite cycle. Well, noteworthy, noteworthy, but not important. It might be if he Prince could. hits a triple. He could. He got his first stolen base the other day, so yeah. you never know. Mark Wagner tells two two triples already this year. There's Corey Hart. With Fielder on, he represents the go-ahead run in a 3-3 ball game. Also down in the truck with us today, Matt Sigafoos. He was dialing up those highlights on our rewind for you. And Lauren White giving you some graphic info all afternoon long. That's dribble foul at the plate. And we want to say congratulations to John Browdy and everybody from Syracuse. 
Dick McPherson, you know, we talked last night about the championship uh, run of Lou Holtz. And here's our Reds text poll. Which Reds affiliate city would you road trip to? Would it be Louisville? Would it be Zebulon? Would it be Sarasota, Dayton, or Billings? Text 37664 for the answer. Can we qualify that by saying what time of year? <laughs> I mean, if I'm thinking about Not February, Billings. let's Billings. see, Montana or, or Florida? Hmm. Again, our congratulations to Lou Holtz, who got into the Football Hall of Fame, but also to John Cooper, former Ohio State coach, who gets in this weekend as well. What a fine gentleman, and number two on the all time Buckeye list to uh, Woody Hayes. And to Dick McPherson out of Syracuse, uh, first class individual out of the same mold as those gentlemen. Great weekend for college football. Two balls, two strikes to Hart. Single and hit by a pitch in his two plate appearances. Harrison knocks it down. They'll get one. They'll get two. What a combo. Jerry Harrison Jr., a great stop and a tremendous turn by Brandon Phillips. Turn this one into two. Something else, huh? I'll tell you what, Jerry Harrison, we've seen go to his right, this time to his left. Dive, flip it to Brandon Phillips, and a good turn by the Reds' second baseman. And just like that, a double play to get the Reds out of a jam. Very nice. Exceptional. That erases fielder two away and here comes Gamble one for two a single last time up. And Jerry Harrison will. Burst into a big smile whenever he sees the lineup card and he's at. Short once a shortstop but always a shortstop and that's certainly the. Joy for Harrison when he gets a chance to start there our text poll results so far most of you. With trick to Louisville. Great ballpark. Great fans. Great organization too. And not many Reds fans have had a chance to go to Zebulon, obviously. It's the first year of the Reds tenure there. For so many years, Chattanooga, a great stop, and we wish them all the best of luck as well in the future. Frank Burke's organization down there outstanding. The Elmers of Louisville, and uh, there is no, I mean, everybody we talk to, Chris, that has never been there before and goes to Dayton or to Billings. I mean, it, you talk about the true life of baseball and the true love of baseball, those two cities exemplify that. Woo. Looks like the bats in a runaway today. 45%. You know, I think a lot of that has to do with being able to see the Reds' top talent. When you go to Louisville, you see guys that are a phone call away from going to the major leagues. And the quality of baseball, let's not mistake it now, the quality of baseball from AAA all the way down to the rookie league is, is significant. Although uh, you tell the people in Dayton uh, that they're not watching fun baseball, they'll tell you you're crazy because they sell out up there every game, a terrific place to watch a ball game. and. Uh, I don't think there's a bad venue in all of the Reds minor leagues, but uh, I can see why people would like to go to Louisville, take in the Bat Museum at the same time. They got the boats right down there on the river. Hey, it wasn't until we moved here when we were still at Riverfront Synergy Field. I mean, all the minor leaguers went through the Reds minor league system. You know, they would go to Dayton, they go to Chattanooga, they go to Louisville, or before that, Indianapolis. All those clubhouses were a lot better than the Reds clubhouse here. Good inning from Cueto. Now the Reds need a run. They today, August the first, first 20,000 fans in attendance will receive a picturesque keepsake frame photo of Great American Ballpark on opening day. For tickets to this and future Reds games, call 513-381 Reds or visit Reds.com. Also get there early because I think. Uh, Jim Tracy will have all family and friends and you might not have enough tickets to, to fill the place up. It'll be good to see Trace won't it. He's done a great job since Boy, taking over there. Has he ever. 
uh, Joey Votto he started the Reds rally in the third with a leadoff base hit. Scored the tying run on a base hit by Johnny Gomes. He leads it off in the fifth. First baseman Brandon Phillips drove in two in the first inning. He's on deck, and Carnacion will follow. Center field hit pretty good. Cameron going back at the warning track. He's got it one step from the wall. Oh, the sweet swing of Joey Votto, a flick of the wrist. That pitch up and away, and he hammers it to left center. Just a little bit on the end of the bat right there. He thought he got it pretty well, but not good enough. And that's the problem with getting the ball to the big part of the ballpark right there. Tell you what, though, every time he swings the bat, the ball goes in the air. The people come to their feet at Great American Ballpark because you just never know. One away, here's Phillips. Brandon singled in two to center in the first, then dribbled one in front of the plate that pushed Votto to second in the third inning. Yeah, it looks like now all of a sudden, George, I shouldn't say all of a sudden, but the last couple of innings anyway, Giovanni Gallardo is beginning to hit his stride, throwing more strikes, getting his breaking ball over. He struggled with his breaking ball early in the ball game, and that's when the Reds scored those two runs with the first two batters that got on base. But recently, he is beginning to really deal. Three strikeouts in the last inning and a half. Getting ahead of the hitters. Not the kind of groove you want to see the opposing pitcher get into. And you kind of got the feeling that Cueto's kind of got his feet under him too the last two innings. So we're nestled in here in a 3-3 ball game. To right into the seats and out of play, one and two. out the center Cameron gloves at a step from the wall and you know Mike he's always talking to somebody and he and the Reds bullpenners Daniel Ray Herrera having a word or two backhanded by Gamble a long throw he gets Brandon by a step nice play by Gamble he robbed Phillips of a potential two base hit Well, they like Matt Gamble a lot a young man who scuffled with the bat from time to time and sometimes a little stiff at third base but boy makes a nice play going backhand there and a strong arm. Well, we've watched in pregame workouts and give a lot of credit to Willie Randolph the bench coach here former manager of course and outstanding second baseman defensively throughout his career most notably with the Yankees but he spent hours upon hours hitting ground balls to Gamble down at third and it's starting to pay off. One frustrating thing for Willie was as he evaluated it the progress of Ricky Weeks. He thought Weeks had made measurable progress defensively before he went down with a wrist injury. Pretty good guy to work with you Willie Randolph. There's a walk to Encarnacion, that Yankee infield. You had Bucky Dent at short, who may be one of the best infield instructors ever. Willie yeah. Randolph, who's outstanding as a second base instructor. And of course, Greg Nettles, nobody was better at third. And if you get to talk some defense with him, those are three pretty special guys. There's Willie. Does he want to manage again? You're darn too, huh? Will he ever get the chance? Who knows? 
free pass to Encarnacion. Here comes Dickerson. Can't believe young Willie Randolph has got gray in his beard. It's all of us, doesn't it? It sure does. I never thought we'd get him, though. I'll get him some of that just for men. Yeah, I think we could probably get him to get some of that. Get me some while you're at it. <laughs> I don't know whether Gretchen would go for that for him though. And she likes the the real thing. One ball, no strikes. Clips the corner down and away, one and one. Dickerson bounced to second, struck out 0 for two. Gomes on deck. Kendall somehow blocks it to throw down to second and just getting a hand in there is Encarnacion. Boy, Kendall made a great play. Edwin had to break right at the outset as the ball hit the dirt or else he wouldn't have been safe. Well, it changes the complexion of the entire bat now for Chris Dickerson. And that's what Gallardo will do from time to time. He'll just try to overthrow his fastball, break his breaking ball off too much and when that starts bouncing around like that, if you're not expecting a wild pitch, you don't even go on that. But that's good base running by Edwin Encarnacion to get him into scoring position. See if it can pay off for Dickerson. That's wide, and it's full count three and two. The Reds have something going. Don't forget tonight's Mega Million jackpot up to $37 million in the Ohio Lottery. Pick up your ticket. You could be a big time winner in the Ohio Lottery tonight. The Mega Millions jackpot, $37 million. Two out, two on, and here's Johnny. Gomes struck out in the second. And then Gallardo got him in an 0 2 hole. He left a breaking ball up. Johnny drilled it into center, knocked in the tying run. Votto in the third. And no sooner do we comment that Gallardo is finding his groove that he goes out and he walks the next two batters with two outs. Another four walk appearance for Giovanni Gallardo. He's walked nine batters in the last two ball games coming into today. To make it 13 walks in the last three ball games. Does not give up a lot of hits, but he gives up base runners because he doesn't always find the strike zone. Hit pretty good to left. Did he get enough? No, it'll be at the warning track, and Braun will haul it in. Two walks, the Reds strand a pair. They've stranded seven through five. We're still tied. Six games. On some of your original schedules, the Friday game in Chicago might not have been on your original TV schedule. We are now picking up that game. Three day games in Chicago. And George, I know you can't wait to get to Dodgers Stadium. Oh, you're not kidding. You got those Dodger dogs, J.D. We've already ordered you about a dozen of them. You'll be ready to go, won't you? I've given up the Dodger dogs, George, trying to lose a couple of LBs. I mean it. I don't believe you. Chris will get his sushi. He knows he can get that there, huh? <laughs> well, he's he's with the highbrow, and he stays at Malibu, George. Sure. He stays away from us on the beach. So yeah, he'll be doing his sushi, maybe some caviar. You know, I was just about to invite Jim Day out, but I think I may have you to blew second, it, JD. some second thoughts about that. <laughs> he now. was just on the phone making reservations for you. Yeah. 
He doesn't want me anywhere near that place. I certainly don't fit in in Malibu. Well, what I'm looking forward to is you guys turn loose in Chicago. Day game Friday, day game Saturday. Look out. I'll miss you guys there, but we'll have fun in L.A. Hey, you'll be doing the Hall of Fame weekend, though, George, and it's our pleasure to have the longtime MC of the Hall of Fame ceremonies as our voice of the Reds. It's a fun weekend, always is, J.D. Thanks, buddy. See you on the postgame show. All right, guys. There's Kendall with one away in the fifth inning. What's your handicap of Rick, Ricky Henderson's speech? I think it'll be one of the more memorable ones you'll ever hear, George. <laughs> yep, I, I really do. Right. I, I don't think right. he'll go on and on either. I think he'll have some prepared notes, but I think that he he's such a character. And no matter how he would try, and I don't think he would, he can't subdue his, his real character. I mean, I played with Ricky Henderson uh, in winter ball one year and uh, have never played with such a talent as he was. When he wanted to play, he was the best player on the field by far. And that was a winter ball down there that had several you know, terrific players uh, like Cal Ripken played in the league that year. Uh, and he was by far the best player without a doubt than anybody else down there. Ricky Anderson, Jim Rice inducted. Of course, also there, the broadcaster this year will be Tony Kubek, long overdue. Brilliant broadcaster, great person, and Nick Peters from the San Francisco Bay Area. Jim Rice, boy, what a lethal offensive weapon he was during the heyday of his career. He was that guy, just like Prince Fielder or Joey Votto, the guy you didn't want to beat you. Johnny's been better the last two innings, 16 pitches in the fifth, nine here in the sixth, over the 100 pitch count marker. Trying to get out of this one quick, no balls, two strikes. And that'll get through. Gallardo will have a base hit. So again, another 0 2 pitch turned around by a batter. A pretty good swing. Gallardo does. Got a batting average over of over a hundred and puts the ball in play. That's about all you can expect to do. So here's Council up for the fourth time. Council single to right out trying to steal in the first. Bounce to second and walk. And this is where Johnny Cueto really needs to all right calm himself down. I'm glad he's taking a little extra time between pitches and say all right this is where this inning's got to stop right here. I want to get in a situation where you know you lose counsel. Now you got Cameron who's seeing the ball better coming up. He's got a base hit and a couple of line, one line drive, and then you got fielder behind him, and he didn't even get out of hand. You tied all up at three right here in a ball game that is really at this point right there for the grabbing for the Reds. Finish off counsel, go in and hope your team can score a run. Strikes to Council. He got him. And he knew it too. Donnie Cueto gives up a base hit to the pitcher, but we're still knotted at three. Time for the Coors Light Freeze Cam. Jason Kendall at the plate. Look out. Boink. Got by Encarnacion. Got by Harrison. A base hit for Kendall. And there's another one that look out. Boink. Good quick reaction by the right hand from Encarnacion or else could have been a nose job. Coors Light Freeze Cam brought to you by Frost Brute Coors Light. Reds fans in force of all ages today. 16 hits in this ball game and six runs. The runs are even. The Brewers have out hit the Reds 10 to 6.
need all the faith you can muster. Here's Hannigan to lead it off, bottom of six. Hannigan and then Cueto do up on the top of the order, Tavares. Ryan today, line to second, struck out looking. Circle, but Drew Sutton also standing at the base of the steps. So what Hannigan does may dictate whether Cueto actually bats or not. Well, a little high two and one. Nick Massett loosening in the bullpen for Cincinnati. a bullet in the center that's a base hit so Cueto will come to the play Chris in all probability to sacrifice he does a good job at that too George pretty good handler of the bat second time and two at bats that Ryan Handigan has hit the ball right back through the middle this time he's no second baseman there to flag it down and Hannigan again the second highest on base percentage of anybody on the Reds Gets it done in the number eight spot. Sets up perfectly now for Cueto to drop a bun down and get that go ahead run on second base. Two sacrifices for Johnny thus far this season. He gets it down. Good job by Cueto. They'll get the out, but the Reds get the go ahead run in scoring position. Johnny does his job and he'll get high fives when he gets back to the dugout. You know, if you can handle the bat well as a pitcher, they're going to leave you in the ball game more often, rather than, you know, being a guy who's completely inept and being able to get a bunt down. Dusty Baker would have been forced to put somebody else in the ball game. This way, Cueto can go back out there. He's beginning to throw the ball better. He's dealing, and he feels good about himself getting that bunt down, and that could mean the difference for him between a win and a no decision. So sitting out at second is the go ahead run. Here's the top of the order, Willie Tavares. Tavares, two for three, including another infield hit. Inside corner for a strike. Our Firestone leaderboard update for today Major League Baseball infield hits Ichiro at 39 coming in, Tavares at 25. Emilio Bonifacio of the Florida Marlins 24 so is Michael Bourne of the Astros and Luis Castillo in that same run along with Scott Pitsednik all guys who can affect the ball game. At the very least you want the Bears to get the ball on the ground and to the right side if possible. Not this time, a swing and a miss. Tavares retired on the strikeout. Two away, and here comes Jerry Harrison Jr. Now, when you can't be home to watch your Reds on Fox Sports Ohio, check out MLB.tv, log on to the internet, watch every out of market Reds game live. For more details, visit Reds.com, where baseball is always on. And another example, Chris, sometimes it doesn't take a base hit, but a productive out to get a run closer to scoring. and. No contact from Willie in that at bat. Now the only least productive out than a strikeout is usually a double play ball. But part of the game. I mean, it's not like Giovanni Gallardo doesn't strike out a lot of guys. He's got more strikeouts in innings pitched this year, so there's no embarrassment going down swinging against him. That's his. Love to be able to pick on a mistake right here for Jerry Harrison and drive that go-ahead run in. Seventh strikeout for Gallardo. 
Gersten doubled his first time up, and then he's been a strikeout victim twice once swinging, once looking against Gallardo. Ball and a strike to Jerry. Cardinals and Diamondbacks are underway, scoreless in the fourth. San Francisco leads the Pirates 4 1 in the seventh in Pittsburgh. Philadelphia 4, Florida nothing in the seventh. Cubs 8, Washington 2 in the fifth. Those games underway in the National League. Rip but foul into the left field corner. One and two to Jerry. Up two and two. Not just get on base, says Dusty Baker, but get your big boppers to the plate. In the on deck circle is Joey Votto, the Reds' best hitter with runners in scoring position. You know, he'd love to get him there. Maka would just as soon see Gallardo dispose of Ariston and never get Votto to the plate. There is no one throwing in the bullpen right now for Milwaukee. At least of the last two at bats have resulted in strikeouts for Jerry Hairston. One looking, one swinging, both of them on a fastball. Hit hard, but right at the shortstop, Hardy. So the Reds get a leadoff base hit from Hannigan. Nothing to show for it. Still tied at three. First inning, Brandon Phillips base hit played it to Veris and Harrison, who had reached base before him. Two nothing Cincinnati. Brewers came back against Johnny Cueto. This fielder's choice at second allows the first run to score. Prince fielder that was in the second. It's a two one ball game. Prince wasn't done yet after being ahead 0 and 2. Cueto gives up this bomb to fielder for Prince his 20. Fourth homer of the season. It was 3 2. The lead belonged to Milwaukee. Johnny Gomes came back. His base hit the center in the third, tied the game at three at Joey Votto Scampers home. So good defense on this afternoon. What a play by Harrison. Great turn by Phillips. The Reds get a brilliant double play. And a result three runs, 10 hits, and an error for Milwaukee. Three runs, seven hits, no errors for Cincinnati. The Brewers have stranded seven. The Reds have stranded eight. Johnny Cueto's day is done. He goes six innings, allows 10 hits, three runs, five strikeouts, a walk, 118 pitches, 68 strikes. He gives way to Nick Massett. Well, he pitched Thursday, took Friday off, pitched yesterday, and here he is today. So three out of four games for Nick Massett in this series against the Brewers. Having a pretty good run of it is Massett. 2.4 earned run average and a perfect 4-0 record. Might be the Reds' good luck charm. You get him a run right here, and he'll run that record to 5-0, and and the Reds can come out of here with a split in a four-game series. Massett goes to work. He pitched an inning and gave up a homer last night against Milwaukee in a game that the Reds lost 5-1. to one. Here comes Cameron, who popped up, singled, and lined out. Mike's had a good series six hits in the series six for 15 for Mike in the series. Way out in front of the breaking ball and it's one and two. Massett has so many weapons and I think George you know the Reds had an, a thought of putting him in the rotation out of spring training but he has excelled so much as a reliever he's throwing harder he's got a good breaking ball has come up with somewhat of a splitter that he used as his change up and that is a great pitch for him. Down to third and Carnacion. Lotto keeps the toe on the bag and there's one away. Don't forget, catch Bearcats Classics and relive last year's Big East Championship season by watching a great game from 2008. It's Monday at noon 
on your home for the Bearcats Fox Sports Ohio the Monday game you see against South Florida. Got to get him into baseball early don't you. Here's Braun strike at bouncer back to the pitcher and a pop up. You know George I knew that comment about attorneys <laughs> deals would elicit some response. No it has I've not received the certified letter but I did get a quick phone call almost immediately from an old friend of mine Reuben Katz and uh, great to hear from him one of the finest men around and uh, uh, nice to know that. He's watching our ball games on a nice Sunday afternoon. A big Reds fan for oh, many years. Huge. Back to the. Very, very involved with the Reds in many ways. Yep. So I'm going to. Oh, now you're take trying to backtrack. Of, of okay. the attorney okay. equation. Here give we him go. A, I'm going to give him a lifetime exemption for any any slights that I make will not include anything directed at Ruben. Don't say lifetime. Eternal. <laughs> or at least until he gets me back out to play golf with him. <laughs> and you'll send him an honorary membership in the pitchers union. Yeah. Fair enough. Hey Reds fans for great tasting quality meals for your family pick up bags of JTM beef or chicken Philly cheesesteaks from your favorite grocer JTM food family fun. So you're not retracting your statements you're just retracting his involvement in those yeah, statements. Yeah, I mean, so, he's not included in any derogatory statements I may make toward the legal practice or any other practice. Did Kremchek email you too? No, he's not on. He's not on the <laughs> exemption list. <laughs> As long as I continue to get those advertising flyers in that, that daily or the, in the supplement Sunday supplement That's you know it. the bag that gets dropped next to your normal Sunday newspaper. Well now we got Doug Gallant with the big full color ad with yeah. Scott's not it. I mean is Kremchek could do the same thing you know. I don't know why the Reds don't hop on that. You could have like you said Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday special every day of the week. Yeah. I think he does have a special every day. But I mean advertising. Flyers in the Sunday paper. Knees, shoulders, elbows. If I had to make you in charge of his marketing department. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I can't I can't touch his marketing. <laughs> Dr. K is way ahead of the curve. Help, does he? He's way ahead of the curve. We just follow in line behind him. Here's the one too. Waved at it. That's the nasty stuff you're talking about Chris boy when you get hitters looking like that I mean really good hitters like all star hitters like Ryan Braun and he goes up there looking like he's never seen a major league pitch before with this swing you know you've got good stuff. Well here we are in the seventh and already today Prince Fielder has done his damage more than normal maybe another look at strike three fielder doubled and scored in the second two run homer in the third and a single to lead off the fifth. So he's got a single a double and a homer. Three quarters of the way to the cycle and Reds fans might remember the last cycle that the Brewers had came against the Reds. Chad Moeller back in 2004 and every time we see him we still joke about it. That was for so many years the Brewers had a standing offer whoever hit for the cycle won a Harley Davidson cycle and lo and behold a month before Chad Moeller hit for the cycle <laughs> the deal expired with the Brewers <laughs> so he never got his cycle every time we see him we said and they had talked about well we may give you one anyway yeah a Schwinn instead yeah. of a Harley <laughs> that's it a three wheeler. Chad never did get that cycle. He got the record book spot, but not the two wheeler. No balls, two strikes to Prince. Got him. Fielder left looking. Back to back strikeouts for Massett. 
One two three inning in the seventh. The Reds going to work. Joey Votto due to lead it off in the eighth. But we will keep it right here. For Telluride in our seventh. Dub chocolate ladies night at the ballpark. The first 10,000 ladies in attendance will receive a special Reds hat. And during the evening ladies can enjoy a variety of activities including a dub chocolate dipping station. Wine tasting area. And on site masseur. For information and half price tickets visit reds.com slash ladies night or call 381 reds. Seth McClung in for the second time in the series he takes over for. Giovanni Gallardo Gallardo goes six innings allows the Reds seven hits and three runs. So it'll be a bullpen game from here on out 36th appearance for the. Big strong right hander and a hard thrower at that. Based on Joey Votto. And then Phillips and Encarnacion due to follow. McClung did enter the game on Thursday night against the Reds. Pitched a third of an inning, gave up an Encarnacion three run home run. Here he'll face Vado, then Phillips, and then Encarnacion in the seventh. Struck out looking first time up. Solid single to center in the third and scored on a base hit by Gomes. And he hit one to the wall in left center field that Cameron caught in the fifth inning. Left center field sink in. It'll drop in front of Braun. Base hit for Votto. Well, what a bit of hitting right there because this is a pitch that's down and out of the strike zone. I mean, that's meant to be a waste pitch. Joey Votto goes down and gets it, hits it well enough to get it into the outfield, and the Reds have reached their leadoff hitter. That's the go-ahead run right there, potential winning run. Well, there comes Brandon. He delivered in the first. A single plated two gave the Reds a two-nothing lead. Thrown out on a dribbler in front of the plate. Here's a bouncer down to third. Gamble will get one, and that's a foul ball. Within a whisker of a 5 4 3 double play, ball just foul by the umpiring crew. So Phillips will get another life. at the council he'll drop the ball and the runner will be safe. They'll get the force at second but Phillips safe so the Reds have a life here in the seventh with a base stealer on base. Now the Reds get a break right here because this is about as much a Taylor made double play ball as you will ever see. In fact I'm surprised that Hardy just didn't decide to take that whole thing himself. Been a lot easier for the shortstop just to come across the bag and fire at the first base. The exchange right there took his eye off the ball for a moment. They still got the out at second base. Actually, it was lucky the Brewers got an out out there as I see that in the replay. The council double dribbled it, but still had the presence to glove it for the force. Now the Reds' hottest hitter now has had a chance now to. To do something once again with a man on base. Edwin officially 0 for 1 and two walks. Hit a fly ball to right back in the first inning, then walked on a 3 2 pitch in the third. That prolonged the inning, gave the Reds a chance to get Gomes to the plate. Johnny singled in the tying run of three. Seven hits in this series. Home run. 
run by Edwin off McClung. On Thursday was his first hit ever off McClung. He's one for six against him. McClung acts like he doesn't want to throw him a strike either. And Gallardo did the same thing. Edwin flied out the right field his first time up. Then he walked his last two times. And now he's got a 3 0 count. He is taking way more bases on balls this year. I know he's been out a long time, two months, but still, that's the one part of his game that has really improved. They're going to go with an outside fastball here. Three and one. Phillips. Relatively short lead down at first, but he's going and it's fouled off. Not really a bad idea right there. McClung can strike you out, but he can just as easily walk you. In fact, he has just as many walks as he does strikeouts. Tell you what, you put Seth McClung and Todd Coffey together and you got a couple of offensive linemen coming out of their bullpen. Some big boys. Big in girth and power arms, too. 6'6, 265. Phillips going again, fouled off again. And I think to a man, I mean, you talk about, we talked often about it when. Roger Clemens joined the Astros or Greg Maddox would join a team. If you get somebody that can tutor a young pitcher, their value is far greater than just the numbers they put up. And that's what Trevor Hoffman's brought to this bullpen. I mean, talking to Todd Coffey, he said it's like a postgraduate course sitting down there with Hoffman every night. And it's the same thing for Seth McClung. These young pitchers are benefiting from the guy who has more saves than anybody else in the history of the game and is willing to share it too. Phillips going again. Lined. Oh, they'll turn it into an inning inning double play. Hit right on the button by Edwin, but right at the second baseman. So McClung gets the benefit. The Reds, a tough luck shot. Pitches. Giovanni Gallardo, six innings, seven hits, three runs allowed. Bullpen game and after Nick Massett had a 1 2 3 7 here comes David Weathers for the eighth Chris yeah, David Weathers 36th appearance but the interesting thing about Weathers this year is he has fewer innings than appearances a guy that has been used in partial innings uh, unused to doing that he had 72 appearances last year right around 70 innings pit so he's a little off his pace last year but really the way the Dusty Baker has used him is that they use him really only in a game in which the Reds are winning or tied and here they are tied in the eighth inning and it's weather's time. Weather's time has been chalked up 932 times now number 18 on the all time list in games pitched Raleigh fingers is number 17 at 944 so only 12 behind the Hall of Famer is David Weathers. Arthur Rhodes on that big list too. He's 55th with 753 appearances. Weathers well, facing Corey Hart and Matt Gamble and J.J. Hardy. Takes the ball away, but not that far away. <laughs> he's a guy that hits a ball to right field with an exceptional power. He's got long arms, he's got kind of a long swing, and he can drop the bat head on a pitch that's down low, too. But he'll go after that outside pitch because he likes it. But if you put it a little farther outside than he wants it, he'll still go after it. And that's the idea for Weathers. Boy, that's a. You give David Weathers that spot, and he'll dial up some zeros. Hart retired. Corey reached on a base hit, hit by a pitch, bounced to do a double play, and this strikeout looking. Corey Hart thinks it was low and outside. Call strike three, one away, a strikeout. Cueto had five strikeouts while he was in there. Massett had two, so it's the eighth strikeout of the afternoon for Reds pitching. Here's Gamble, two strikeouts and a base hit. In the left, Dickerson. 
circling finally hauls it in. Two away. Hey, find out what sports moments have made the best top 50 countdown this week with host Chris Rose and Carissa Thompson. You'll see it weeknights only on Fox Sports Ohio presented by 1-800-SAFE-AUTO. Here's the shortstop J.J. Hardy. His fielder's choice played at the first run. Back in the second inning for the Brewers. Sent fielder home. He flied to left in the third and bounced to third in the sixth. Hardy against David, five for 15 in their matchups. Taking them on for David Weathers. He's been with the Reds, of course, a couple of times back in '98. Then again in 05, 6, 7, and 8. And when he left the Reds in '98, he went to Milwaukee. Spent three years with the Brewers. And a very valuable man in their bullpen. And among his decisions when he was deciding where to sign as a free agent, Milwaukee was again another place. And Chris should talk about chances to win and that is very important but also for David I mean, it's about family you know, it's where his family will be comfortable and there's a strike on the outside corner three and two and they're barking at Kevin Causey from the Brewers dugout they think this pitch is low remember from a dugout spot the only thing you see is up and down you don't see whether pitch is outside or not but you see the last flick of the wrist of the catcher trying to frame it up. Hey they'll give it to you David you just continue to live out there. Three two. Hop back and out of play. Ken Maka and Causey have been frequent conversants in this series. It was Causey who made the call out at second base when he called interference on Mike Cameron that really was a game changer. And last night there was another call over at first base that he questioned. So they followed each other around the diamond in the four game series. And David Weathers takes care of business. Weathers with the strikeout. Two strikeouts from Massett last inning. Two strikeouts for Weathers this inning. Reds go to work. Bottom of eight in a 3-3 game. Of the game, you talk about assists. You talk about a guy behind the plate who sure has helped his pitchers this year, and that is Ryan Hannigan. Tough pitch to throw on, but he gets it. He nails Council down at second base. He helped Johnny Cueto in that. That is our Mercedes attention assist of the game. Back to work go the Reds Ryan Hannigan do up third this inning it's Dickerson Gomes and Hannigan do up here in the eight. And this is the spot where you want to do some business. Put a run up and then force there's a base hit by Dickerson. Force the opposition to have only one shot to get it back. Dickerson's first hit. He was 0 for 2 in a walk. Here's a leadoff hit in the eighth. Now we'll see what Dusty Baker does. The speed of Dickerson. Dickerson outstanding speed at the minor league level. A threat as a base stealer has not been a threat at the major league level to steal yet. Now this ball game a lot like yesterday's in as much as the Reds were able to get the runners on base to start the inning five times in nine innings yesterday five times in eight innings today. See if they can get them over. Here comes Gomes strike out run scoring base hit and a line drive out. Gomes in his career as an American leaguer very seldom called upon to bunt. So you would think if you put something on with Gomes it'll be more likely a hit and run as opposed to a bunt or do you give Dickerson a chance to steal a base. I mean he's got seven stolen bases and you figure Chris with his speed he can be even more of a threat as a base stealer. A lot of that is confidence at the major league level. One oh wide. Two balls, no strikes. John 
and he's been solid with runners in scoring position this year. 320. One of three batters in this lineup over 300 with runners in scoring position for the Reds today. Cincinnati. quick bat by Johnny Gomes to get the head to it. Well you know what that means for the ninth inning in the Reds bullpen Coco Cordero. The Reds take a 5 3 lead here in the bottom of the eighth. And here comes Hannigan. by Ryan first out and a strikeout for McClung here in the eighth another look at number six for Johnny Gomes he's a good fastball hitter and he gets one that kind of tails up and into him right here and he puts a nice short swing on it Gomes does he's a strong guy McClung supplied the power and Gomes supplied the wood. The only question was it kept hooking. <laughs> it got one row in, that's all it takes. And it stayed fair, that's all it takes too. McClung gave up the three run homer to Encarnacion and gives up this shot to Gomes. It's been a rough series for Seth. Seth bouncing back after Tommy John's surgery, a big time starting prospect in the Tampa Bay organization. And he's become very solid in this bullpen for Milwaukee. Here's Lance Nix hitting in the eighth, the ninth spot in the order here in the eighth inning. Hardy charging. Nix retired two away. Tips for Paul Yanish, huh? <laughs> this is the way he hit a home run. <laughs> Likeable guy, Chris. Uh, very positive guy. In fact, down at AAA, Rick Sweet, you know, he was didn't know where the leadership would come from early in the year. And when Gomes didn't make the major league club, he was sent down. And really, the people down there didn't know what Johnny was going to bring with him. Would be would he be bent out of shape? Would he be Unhappy to be at AAA. And Rick Sweet said very clearly he came in, got into the program. He was a difference maker for us, not just on the field by his numbers, but the way he conducted himself. You wait, hope you're going to get a chance, and finally the opportunity came for Johnny. And in Limited playing time, six home runs a pretty good number. It's 
especially if you get him at a tie ball game in the eighth inning. Ball two strikes to Tavares. Looking ahead to the ninth inning, Jason Kendall, the catcher, the eighth hitter, due to lead off. Then McClung and then Council do up. With Cadero ready to come in. in on the Gomes homer here in the bottom of the eight. Slicing foul and into the first row of the seats. Good job Adam. Adam Snow still giving a souvenir to the youngster who Got the punishment in his hands too. <laughs> no glove there. That was all meat. Now Tavares hanging tough against McClung. It'll be a 10 pitch at bat. Talked about hitting with runners in scoring position. Votto, Gomes, and Carnacion over 300. Slugging percentage among the Reds. Joey number one, Gomes number two. Good at bat for Willie. He works a walk. Dials up the bullpen after McClung gives up a single, a homer, and now a walk with two outs. And Jerry Harrison Jr. coming to the plate. If you joined us late, a couple of news and notes from today. Alex Gonzalez sent down to Louisville on a rehab assignment, so getting closer. There goes Tavares. Here comes the throw. Going to go into right field. Willie will slam on the brakes as Cameron in tight and quickly picks it up. That is the first time in a long time that Willie Tavares has decided to go on the very first pitch after he reaches first base. With two outs, no reason to wait at all. And even with a fastball from McClung, a wild throw by Jason Kendall. Heads up back up there by Mike Cameron. You've got to start charging from the center field right away if you're Cameron in order to keep Tavares at second base. But now in scoring position and a little piece of insurance out there if they can play them. Pitch a strike to Harrison, so here's the 0-1. Again, back to Alex Gonzalez. Alex, who took infield yesterday and looked fine, starts his rehab today. Hopes are that after a, around a week of rehab, he could rejoin the club, or possibly at the end of this current road trip. So good news for Alex Gonzalez. Right field sinking but Hart right there he's got it. But the big bopper from Johnny a home run his sixth of the year a two run shot in the bottom of the eighth gives the Reds a two run lead. How about this double play Chris. I'll tell you what George just came at just the right time for Johnny Cueto a layout action by the short side of Jerry Harrison a turn by Brandon Phillips and just like that a six four three double play to 
pick up Johnny Cueto and preserve the ball game. Five to three now and three outs away is Francisco Cordero from nailing this one down and splitting a four game series with the Brewers. Changes for the Reds. Lance Nick stays in the game. He'll go to left field. Tavares in center. Dickerson moves from left to right. So it's Nix, Tavares, Dickerson in the outfield. And in to wrap this one up, Coco Cordero will take over on the mound for the Reds. Five runs, ten hits for Cincinnati. Three runs, ten hits for Milwaukee. Here's Jason Kendall. Kendall back to work. Base hit to left, base hit to third, two for three on this day. For Jason, a nine game hitting streak continued today with those two hits. Kendall in his career against Cordero, four for 13, 308. Dribble down to third, Encarnacion playing tight, his throw. Got him. And Cordero pumps his right hand right at Edwin because that saved a potential situation to get the tying run to the plate. We've had so many relievers over the years, George, just tell us over and over again, getting that first man of the inning when you're in a safe situation is so important. And that is a fantastic play by Edwin Encarnacion. Bare hand thrown on the run, on the money. And he's wearing those old fashioned kind of flip downs. I, I kind of like that. Catalinato pinch hitting, flies it to left. Nicks against the wall, hauls it in. Two pitches, two outs for Coco. Neither one particularly easy, but he'll take the two outs. Back to the top of the order, Craig Council. Council, one for three in a walk, and that'll get the fans 25,924 strong on their feet. Hopeful of a Reds victory that'll gain a split in the series. They'll take you through Council's at bat. Wide for a ball. Cardinals lead Arizona two to one. They're in the seventh. Cardinals have only two hits. Pinheiro knocked in both runs. He has one hit. Pujols has the other. San Francisco leads Pittsburgh four three in the ninth. In the ninth, Philadelphia five, Florida nothing. In the seventh, Cubs eleven, Washington two. Here's the one one. Trying to nail down his 22nd save. He's converted 21 of 22 opportunities. That's a smiling scoreboard. That's a smiling closer. Coco Cordero nails down his 233rd save of his career. The Reds nail down a W and gain a split in the series with Milwaukee. Smiling scoreboard for Cincinnati on this day. Five runs, ten hits for the Reds. Three runs, ten hits for the Brewers. Johnny Cueto bounces back, doesn't get...